everyone, my name is Jonathan Church and I have here with me today Lewis Ortenzio and welcome to Lutra TV. Today we're going to be talking about ceramic membranes and I'm going to be asking Lewis a series of questions about them because even though I'm familiar with um, traditional polymeric membranes, not so much with ceramics. So I guess to get into it Lewis, what is a ceramic membrane? Yeah, so a ceramic membrane is a membrane that's made of a, a ceramic type material so it's a generally a harder material than what polymeric membranes are made out of. Is it like a coffee cup? Uh, I guess if you're going to simplify it, yeah sure. Awesome. Typically like silicon carbide is one that's um, thrown around a lot, zirconia is thrown around a lot, aluminum oxide is also mm. a ceramic material for membranes. What's great about them is that they, because they're inert and much more chemically resistant than polymers and thermally more resistant, you can throw a lot at them and you can get them dirty and then you can clean them really hard and they won't break down at the same rate or anywhere near the same rate and it's debatable that they won't break down at all compared to polymeric membranes and conventional membranes. So the idea is that um, you don't have to ever replace them. You can install mm. them once and continue to use them throughout the life of the plant. With ceramic membranes, um, you know, how have we been trialing them? We developed a relationship with um, one of our clients, Wipe the District Council, and um, one of their plants is going to undergo a renewal and transition to a membrane plant, um, ideally. And that's um, the Alpha Street water treatment plant. And um, we found an opportunity with them to be able to pilot ceramic membranes at this site because we thought there would be a lot of value in piloting ceramic membranes at that site, but also to pilot it for New Zealand and the water treatment industry for New Zealand as a whole to kind of blaze a trail for um, Water New Zealand basically because from, from our understanding and our research there really isn't much use of um, ceramic membranes across mm -hmm. New Zealand. Maybe some industrially but mm -hmm. um, industrial would, factories and the like. Yeah but... they would be at a very small scale and not used in any regards with regards to water treatment or wastewater treatment. But yeah we, we thought it was a competitive offering based on our option study mm -hmm. depending on the flux that you um, that you use as an assumption. Go yeah, ahead. well, it was, I guess getting into the nuts and bolts of it so far, with what is the Where the pilot, nits and grits, the, nits the nitty and gritty. <laughs> getting into the detail, um, so what is what has the pilot shown so far in terms of performance? Yeah, so we're, we're achieving a flux, a sustainable flux of 200 LMH. And a flux is the flow rate through a surface area of membrane. LMH is liters per square meter per hour, so we're achieving 200 LMH. And that's compared to about 50 to 60 LMH for conventional polymeric membranes. Mm. And our transmembrane pressure, so the pressure loss across the membrane is around 20 to 30 kPa. And we're achieving drinking water um, standard compliance through the outlet turbidity, so the treated water yep. turbidity. And we are using a little bit more chemical than you would for polymeric membranes, but I think that's just part that's just uh, comes with the territory mm. of operating ceramic membranes anyway. Perhaps the higher flow rates and higher pressures yeah. need a little bit more chemical. You're gonna have to yeah. clean, you get the same fouling, so you have yep. to clean that fouling off at a faster rate and more frequently. Yep, but that kind of LMH means that you could downsize a treatment plant from 100 square meters to, you know, half that. 30, yeah, 30 theory. to 40 square meters, you know, that's just an example. Yeah, that's the idea. And it is showing that, and we are cleaning these things frequently, although the plant's only been operation for three to four months, so you won't see any real long-term wear mm. with that type of operation, but it, it's performing fine with the, the rate that we're cleaning it at. So. Yeah, okay. Well, that sounds pretty promising. So where to next for these ceramic membranes? Well, we're going to close up this pilot relatively soon, and we'll um, do some reporting to show what the, uh, the operational data that we've collected and the, and the flux rates, we'll use that to basically come back around and, and check our assumptions on the original option study and design basis to see what size the membrane, the ceramic membrane system would be and what the cost would be. And so we'll see how competitive it is based on um, real data that mm -hmm. way. And then we'll present this data, um, the idea is to present this data openly and transparently. So we'll present it at conferences and things like that mm -hmm. and put it on our website, write up a case study for it to help other, other councils and other clients and other industries in New Zealand be able to understand what you could get out of ceramic membranes in this particular application so that it kind of demystifies the ceramic membrane technology mm. and it's not just a pilot study that we keep to ourselves, you know, the idea is that we open it up to everybody so people can learn from it and New Zealand gets to take a step forward 
yeah. as a water industry and a wastewater industry. So. Well, that sounds pretty good. I mean, a harder wearing membrane that lasts longer and yeah, potentially gives a much smaller footprint could be a win-win. Yeah, that's the idea. If all things come together, but I guess that's the point of the pilot. Mm -hmm. And we've had some great support from our, our technology partner, which is Sarah Filtech out of um, Europe. I think they're out of Germany. And then their local um, team here, which is supported by Infinite Water. So we've had right. some great support from those um, those teams and have helped us out quite a lot in bringing a new technology that we yeah. didn't have much experience with at the start and helped us get our feet under us and get going. So mm. that was great. Excellent. So where's your next for the pilot plant? Well, we have a couple clients that are interested in using it um, on the water side. So we're going to um, run that down with them and see whether there are any viable locations for it. But we're also considering the transition over to wastewater treatment right now. But um, the whole thing with that is once we transition to wastewater, most people don't really want Difficult to, to switch back. back over to water. So that's kind of a pretty definitive decision to make. So that's what we're looking at. We're going to look at other water treatment sites and then um, there's value in piloting at another water treatment site or two. We'll do that. If we think we've done what we've needed to do, then we'll uh, transition it over to wastewater and try and find a site to um, pilot for wastewater treatment in either, in either MBR or um, a tertiary fil filter application. Mm. So. so what would make a good water treatment plant candidate? Anything with a high solids load? Use yeah, high coagulants. solids, variable solids. We don't have uh, pretreatment on our skid. We can add pretreatment, but um, preferably a site that has some coagulant dosing so we can just take the coagulant uh, the water that's been dosed with coagulant yeah it certainly want um, cell cellular access cellular coverage so that we can we can um, access mm, it ideally yeah thanks for watching this Lutra TV episode and thanks John for the questions <laughs>